Welcome to The Diesel Dad. My name is Anders Varner, and today's episode, we are going to answer one question that is insanely complex, but also wildly simple all at the same time. Isn't everything like that? Like insanely complex, but also wildly simple when we start to have some very specific things that we can do to tip the scales in our favor? Well, guess what? The question that we're going to answer is how you can live like a healthy person. What are the three characteristics that allow you to be healthy for a lifetime? But before we get into the show, make sure you bring your attention down into the show notes, in the description. That is where there is a link where you can set up a free call with me, a free coaching call. If you are a busy dad that needs to lose between 20 and 40 pounds without restrictive diets and spending 60 to 90 minutes in the gym, you can schedule a call with me. Not only are we going to discuss the nutrition and fitness program that's going to get you to the, your desired weight, but we're also going to build a larger purpose to the program so that you know why you are in this program, what you are going to get out of it, and how we can build the future you, the diesel dad, set that trajectory from where you are, where you want to go, and why you're going to go through this process in the beginning, the diesel dad mentorship. Busy dads want to lose between 20 and 40 pounds. Set up a call with me today. Now, how do you live like a healthy person? I have been doing this, as I've said on this show many, many times. 25 summers now and there's an interesting thing that happens when you start to look back on 25 years of training and the number of people that you worked with the number of people that have kind of like fallen out of this industry or number of training partners that have like been your training partners for a long time and then they, they get out of shape and they have a hard time getting back and they don't really they can't find that purpose after maybe being an athlete or competing in Olympic weightlifting, competing in CrossFit, like almost every single dad that we work with at some point in time had a multi-year stint in CrossFit and then their lives got so busy that they, they couldn't make it to the one hour long CrossFit class or they couldn't put in the work or their times and weights started to go down because they weren't sleeping as well once they had kids. And then all that negative momentum started to gain steam and the nutrition started to fall off the wagon and their mindset started to go bad because they were already headed in a negative place. And then next thing you know, 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 40 pounds, everything starts to unravel as they progress and, and things start to uh, unravel slowly. And then over time they seem to pick up speed as, as we like exponentially get further and further away from one year to two years to four years away from those days when you were training really hard and super focused on your nutrition. Now, the way that we talk about getting back and like, what is health? Well, I'm not Mr. Biomarker here, right? Like I'm not going to sit here and read you through your blood work and tell you this is good. This is your cholesterol. None of that. I'm also not going to sit here and preach. You need to eat a certain way. In all honesty, like you can go get that on Instagram anywhere you want. That's people screaming at you to be in a caloric deficit and it's just not my world. That's not my, like that tactical piece just isn't for me. The part that I like is understanding the behaviors that go into living like a healthy person, a person that has physical freedom, a person that at any point in time is capable of getting up and going for a hike, playing with their kids, running and sprinting, playing catch, and most importantly, having the energy to do it. That energy piece is super important because how many times do you wake up in the middle of the day and you have this just like sluggish mentality about the day? You feel defeated like immediately and then you walk in the bathroom and you just immediately don't like the way you look and it, it's depressing, right? Like it's, it's this time where you just go, ugh, and it happens first thing in your day. So how do we combat that and, and set our day up so that we are, are in shape, we're mentally capable and, and we have a mindset that allows us to move forward along that trajectory from who we are to where we want to be to build this diesel dad persona that is specific to you and the values that you have in your life. And there's three main characteristics that you need to have in order for you to uh, live this healthy life. And the very first one is to be an opportunist. The very second one is to have a playbook that allows you to fill the, the gaps in your life with healthy things. That's building a library, right? And the very third thing is the most important, really, is the aggression at which you attack those specific things. Now, when we talk about number one, being an opportunist, when I start to look at my day, my calendar sucks. Like, I'll tell you right now, my calendar sucks much like your calendar. If it's not filled up with work things or meeting things or kid things or parent things, it's filled with like 
house things, or garden things, or build this things, or fix this things. All of these things that compete for the same 24 hours that we all have in our days. That means that you need to become an opportunist. You see, most of the time, and this, this is really for a lot of the, the athletes out there that have been training, or ex-athletes, I should say, that have trained in their life or played sports in their life. If you played high school sports, if you played college sports, even just sports in general growing up as a kid, you, you understand the, the concept that the majority of a game is played in the middle. Everyone's just breaking even. If you play ice hockey, most of the action happens between the blue lines. If you play soccer, most of it happens at midfield. There's very few scoring opportunities in a soccer game. If you play basketball, yeah, there's a lot of points scored, but it's a lot of back and forth, breaking even most of the game. Now, what happens in sports is there are moments where the other team gets tired or the other team has a mismatch on the field in which, or, or the court in which your players can dominate the players that they have. These are opportunities. Now, when you start to look at your day and you look at your schedule, you have to develop a keen eye for understanding where the opportunities lie for you to be able to get some fitness in. That means if you wake up 30 minutes before your family wakes up, that's a perfect time to go walk a mile, right? It's the perfect time to get some sort of really healthy breakfast. That's the perfect time to create some space in your day so that it is not being competed against by other people. You may have a gap of 20, 30, 45 minutes, maybe an hour in between meetings, which isn't enough time to start and finish a new project. However, it's the perfect amount of time for you to be able to get outside, go for a walk, maybe hit some burpees, maybe if you have a home gym, grab some dumbbells, hit some rows, things like that. It's about being an opportunist, to be able to look at an entire 12, 14 day, or 14 hours in a day that you have, maybe 16 awake hours, and be an opportunist to find the gaps that you can go and get some sort of workout. Now, when we lay this out, it looks a lot like the four quarters of fat loss, which is finding in a four hour gap, where are you gonna go walk a mile? That's your first quarter, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., right? Go walk a mile, wake up a little bit early, hit the Diesel Dad 100, get 100 reps of some sort of exercise just to get moving, get the blood flow out of your organs, into your muscles, prepare you for the day, boost that metabolism, start the process, start the day strong. In that second hour, we're gonna do the same thing. Go for a walk, maybe hit a little workout, get some movement in, stretch for two minutes, make sure you're drinking your water. All those things, be an opportunist. How can you fight for every minute of the day so that you always have the time to be able to work out? Now, part two of this is about building a library of healthy habits, right? And this is, super, super important and something that you have to develop over time by just practicing, right? And when I'm talking about a library, you have to realize that nothing is going to be optimal. You should plan on suboptimal days. And when, I'm, when I talk about an optimal day, that means you went to you woke up, all your kids ate breakfast perfectly, you shipped them off to school or daycare, and then you went and had a perfect day at work where nobody was trying to take your time and all of your schedule and appointments met on time and everything was perfect. And then you had a perfect hour in your day for you to go and work out perfectly. And then you got home, the kids came home, there was a perfect uh, night with your kids eating dinner and you had a nice dinner with your wife and everybody had great con Yeah, right. When was the last time that happened? Try never. It never happens. So why are you trying to do it? Why are you trying to fit a perfect workout program into this imperfect way of living? Like we all have crowded schedules. We all have this disaster of things flying around. It's it seen every, every, every environment and ecosystem seems stretched to the max. However, if you practice building this library of healthy habits, what it means is because you're an opportunist and you find 20 minutes, you have a library of things that you can do in a 20 minute gap that will tilt the scales in your favor. If you've got 10 minutes, you could go out into your front yard and run some wind sprints and you're gonna be prepared for whatever meeting it is unless you're presenting and you're just paying attention to a meeting. You don't need to be in perfect, non-sweaty version of yourself. You can turn the camera off, it doesn't matter. Like you can, you can be at that meeting, you're not gonna be panting. If you have to present something, sure, you've, you've got a different thing to do. But what's stopping you from stretching for five minutes? What's stopping you from getting outside, going from a walk? If you've got 20 minutes, go walk a mile. 
What's stopping you from playing what is my favorite game of all time in my entire fitness career, which is the mailbox game. You go for a little walk, you pick a mailbox that's a little far out in the distance and you sprint as hard as you can to it. And once you get to it, you just stop. And then you walk until you catch your breath. And then you pick another mailbox that's about 100 yards away and you sprint as hard as you can to it and then you stop. And if you do that five, six, seven, eight times over a 20 to 25 minute period, you've got one of the best workouts that exists on this planet. It costs you 25 minutes. You've gotten your heart rate up. You've crushed it. You've worked on speed, power, athleticism, everything, core strength, all of it, all of it's wrapped into one tiny thing. And all you got to do is get up and go and sprint to a mailbox. It's so simple. And people fall off the rails when things aren't perfect. This is like the thing that gets people. They get on a good pace and the next thing you know, they're out for a vacation. They have to eat dinner at some sort of uh, imperfect place where they're at a gas station. Well, guess what? I know how to eat healthy as crap in a, at a gas station. You want to put me in a gas station? Your boy can get jacked on gas station nutrition. Why? Because when I go into the gas station, I don't go to the soda machine. I don't go to that hot bar nastiness. You can go and just get some lean beef jerky. You can get a bag of nuts. Everything's good. Usually there's some fruit in there. The bottom line is the goal is to build a, a Rolodex, to build a library of things that you can do inside small windows when things are imperfect that allow you to be on the healthy side of every single situation. Is it going to be perfect right off the bat? No. Are you going to have to play with it? Yes, of course you're going to. But the goal is to create a library so you can be an opportunist. You can find the gaps in your day where you're, you're going to be able to tilt the scales in your favor, where you're going to be able to get 20 minutes. You're going to be able to get 30 minutes. You got an hour, go do a full workout. You got 20 minutes, go play the mailbox game. You're at a gas station. You, you don't have enough time to eat something perfect. Well, guess what? Here's, here's a really good way to do it. And then build that library. So when you're at the gas station, you know exactly what foods to eat that are going to be nutritious and fit inside whatever macro nutrition plan you have. You also, you need to be able to have a, a library of workouts that are simple and easy. You may show up at a hotel one day and there's no weights in there. Well, guess what? There's a treadmill. Guess what? There's your body weight. Guess what? There's tons of things that you can do that are going to allow you to be strong, lean, and athletic that don't require a ton of effort in an imperfect scenario. And the third thing is that you have to be aggressive. You got to be aggressive about this. When I talk about aggressive, I mean like, laser vision, this is the thing I'm going to do. Nobody is going to break up this time and everybody is going to know that I mean business. If it's in the calendar, if it's on my mind, I'm going for the walk. I'm going to wake up early before everybody in my house does so I can wake up and get a mile in. All of these things need to be attacked with aggression because here's what happens if you don't attack them aggressively. If you do not attack your fitness aggressively, you are signaling to the world. You are signaling to your inner circle. You're signaling to your family. You're signaling to your work that it isn't important to you. And if it isn't important, nobody's going to respect it. Nobody's going to go, oh, he's working out. Leave him alone. You're never going to get that. However, if you're aggressive and you do it every single time and you tell yourself that you're, that you're going to do it and then you do it, that builds trust with yourself. That builds confidence. That signals to the entire world that you mean business. And then they start to respect it. And then it becomes your identity. It becomes the person that you are because you're the type of person that likes to do hard things because doing hard things is fun. And it's not easy to be an opportunist to find those gaps in your schedule. It's not easy to find a library of things that you, you can do to tilt the scales in your favor and practice fitness in, an, in a suboptimal way in a suboptimal environment. It's also not easy to aggressively attack those goals, to block everything out, to, to ignore all of, all of the things that you could be doing or should be doing and really think about exactly what you need to be doing to move the needle forward on your own fitness and health. These three things are going to guide you to living a healthy life. You have to be an opportunist so that you can find the, the cracks in your day to be able to get up, get after it. You have to have a library, a playbook of things that you can do that are healthy no matter what the environment is, no matter how bad the timing is, no matter how suboptimal your day is, you have to have a library of things that fit into those gaps 
and you have to aggressively attack them. Those three keys are going to allow you for the rest of your life, developing that mindset, developing those behaviors, developing that routine, those things hands down will allow you to live a healthy life forever. My name is Anders Warner. Get in the description. Busy dads you need to lose between 20 and 40 pounds. Get in there, schedule a call with me. We're going to lay all this stuff out for you. We'll see you guys next week.